Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Saturday the 12th of June. Today's service comes from a prayer book for Australia and you'll need one of these if you want to follow along. And the service starts on page 422 if you'd like to follow the service. We'll also be reading a psalm, Psalm uh, 103, and today you can find that psalm in the prayer book on page 328. And I'd recommend as well that you follow along for our Bible reading from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians, and I'll point that out later on. As we begin, we would like to acknowledge and pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. Our loving and wise creator in his goodness gave this estate to the Awabakal people, and it is upon their land that we meet today. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. And you may want to join with me for the opening canticle. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in right paths ways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, Amen. And as I said, our psalm is Psalm 103, and you can find this on page 328 in the prayer book. And you may want to join with me. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sin and heals all your infirmities who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with mercy and compassion, who satisfies your being with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great goodness. He will not always be chiding, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy over those that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those that fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are as but as grass, we flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place will remember it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures for ever and ever, toward those that fear him, and his righteousness upon their children's children, upon those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. 
The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, all you his angels, you that excel in strength, you that fulfil his word and obey the voice of his commandment. Praise the Lord, all you his hosts, his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Lord Jesus Christ, eternal word and light of the Father's glory, send your light and your truth that we may both know and proclaim your word of life to the glory of God the Father, for you now live and reign, God for all eternity. Amen. And our reading from the New Testament is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And we'll be starting at chapter 10, verse 13, and reading through to chapter 11, verse 6. And I'd encourage you to follow along in your own Bible. We, however, will not boast beyond limits, but will keep within the field that God has assigned to us to reach out even as far as you. For we were not overstepping our limits when we reached you. We were the first to come all the way to you with the good news of Christ. We do not boast beyond limits, that is, in the labour of others. But our hope is that as your faith increases, our sphere of action among you may be greatly enlarged, so that we may proclaim the good news in lands beyond you without boasting of work already done in someone else's sphere of action. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord, for it is not those who commend themselves that are approved, but those whom the Lord commends. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I promised you in marriage to one husband, to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by its cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge. Certainly in every way and in all things, we have made this evident to you. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. We're hearing quite a bit these days about billionaires who are wanting to set up colonies on Mars or mine asteroids. And what they're doing is they're going well beyond their own limits or even our own limits as humans. And they're trying to, or they're claiming that they're going to make the world a better place or make, make it better for humanity. But what Paul is calling us to do in this passage is to not boast beyond our limits. Paul isn't boasting beyond his limits, and he doesn't want those people in Corinth or us to boast beyond our own limits. He wants them to live lives for Jesus within their own sphere. He wants us to love one another and to make the world a better place within our own sphere, not beyond our limits. And that's actually how we're going to spread the good news of Jesus, if we spread it within our own limits. There's plenty of people around us who need to hear the good news of Jesus. We don't need to go to Mars. We don't need to mine on asteroids to spread the good news of Jesus. The good news of Jesus needs to be heard in our own sphere. And that is what Paul is calling us to do in this passage. You might want to join with me for the canticle. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. 
Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We come to a time of prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and always. Amen. And our collect for this week. O Lord, from whom alone all good things come, grant that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good and by your merciful guiding may perform them. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this week we particularly pray for the G7 meeting in England that's happening. And we pray that those leaders will act within their sphere of influence and will act justly and righteously as they lead the nations, the powerful nations of the world. And we pray also for our own government here in Australia, that it will act with compassion and Christian love and that we will live up to our reputation as a Christian country as we consider the family from Bioella who've been on Christmas Island for three years nearly. And we pray particularly for their daughter who's very sick in hospital. Give thou government a spirit of compassion. Give them a spirit of Christian love that they may fulfill your, um, your word in this part of our world. And God, we pray also for our government that they will be effective as they roll out the vaccine for, against COVID. Give them um, a sense of rightness and con care and consideration that they'll be able to do this effectively and efficiently. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Come to visit us, Lord, this night, so that by your strength we may rise at daybreak to rejoice in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Amen.